As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother, Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come out to me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. So we celebrate the feast of uh, the Apostle Andrew. So Andrew was the one that was first called. He was called the protoclet, the first to be called by Jesus. Because all accounts point to the fact that Andrew was actually a disciple of John the Baptist initially. So and then... John the Baptist saw the Lord and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. You know, John the Baptist has said, I will decrease and he will increase. And so his function was to point to the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God that God, through that Abraham had told his son Isaac, God will provide. Mm -hmm. So several years several years and God continues to provide but he provided a lamb and John was marked as the man who was going to point him out because there were so many other people around claiming sometimes to be the Messiah as in our day today he pointed him out that was his mission to point the Messiah out and you know it's like Andrew just said if you're not the guy why should you hang out with you Boom. He went to Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 44. He said, Rabbi, where do you live? Jesus said, come and see. They spent the night with him. Spent that day, throughout the whole day. And after that, he was completely changed. He knew. One night, one day with the Lord is sufficient. He went, boom, to his brother, Simon Peter. <laughs> we have found the Messiah. We have found the one of Moses' road. We have found the one the prophecies talked about. He was all, you know, like, like fire. And that word goes forth through all the earth. That same message. But you know, Andrew left the one who wanted to decrease so that Christ may increase. And actually, he himself continued to decrease because all he did was to bring people to Jesus. He brought Simon Peter, and Simon Peter took the show. <laughs> he brought Nathaniel. And, you know, Jesus was even talking about Nathaniel, the one, you know, who is impeccable. No deceit in him. You know, Andrew had no, you know. But Andrew showed up again sometimes. When Jesus was talking about, you know, these 5,000 people, let's feed them. And Andrew was the one introducing, again, the guy who had two, five loaves and two fish, the young boy. And it was Andrew. You know, there's something there about him. Welcome, opening his arms and allowing people to find the Messiah because he was so convinced of the message. He has been so transformed of the message that he allowed that word to go to the next person, knowing it is not for him alone. He would not share this message all alone. He wanted it to be shared. What is evangelization, of course? I've heard it around here so well. How people say, oh, that word is too big. Yes, it's too big. But how do you introduce somebody to your favorite restaurant? Is that too big also? No. 
They serve good food. Yeah. Why? Because you taste it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You taste it. They've got good, good, awesome waiters. Waiters. Awesome. And the service is good. And nice conversation. You have witness. You have witness. That's evangelization. Witness. But if you have nothing to share, okay, evangelization is difficult. That's the point. That's our fear. We have nothing to share. Probably. If we do not have something to share, it means we have not experienced something. We have not experienced something. Andrew experienced only in one day the transforming power of God. And he went all around telling those who were in his world, those in his circle, about this message. Who are those in your circle? Who are those in within your family, your friends, co-workers, colleagues? Who are those you, you know, move around with? Who are those you think even today, oh my, oh my, they don't know what's going on. They don't, they've not heard about Jesus. They've not heard about the truth. They've not heard that there's a Savior. They've not heard that life is not broken as it is like now. They have not heard the transforming message that changes the world, that changes every human heart. They've never heard of it. And you are placed right there for them. Is it possible? Have you ever been able to say, hey, you know what? Let's go for Mass. Invite a friend for a liturgical service, for adoration, for prayer, for rosary. Let's invite, you know. But you know, if you do not understand, if you do not, if you have not fetched from that well, the ocean, the well, and tasted of the water, and feel that, wow, this is so beautiful, you wouldn't be able to invite someone. But how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? How can we call on the one who have not believed? And how can they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can someone preach unless they are sent? We have been called and sent by our baptism. We have been commissioned to go and preach and announce, just like Andrew announced to his brother, announced to those around him. And indeed, he announced even up to Greece. He went far to announce and was crucified on an X-shaped cross. That's why we put on red. So all those who went ahead of us died for preaching that faith. We're not called to lie on our couches and enjoy all the beauties and the beauties and forget the message. There is only one message. Jesus Christ died for you and for me. That's all that matters. When you see those guys who hang around the crossroads and the traffic lights, they are fired up. They are fired up because they can't understand why the whole rest of the world is moving and they are, we are suffering and people do not realize there's a savior who has actually saved the world. He sent me to bring the good news to the poor. Tell prisoners that they are prisoners no more. Tell blind people that they can see. And set the downtrodden free. And go tell everyone the news that the kingdom of God has come. And go tell everyone the news that the God's kingdom has come. The poor, the poor, the definition, that's why the definition of the secular world is not what poor is. The poor is those who do not know Christ. The poor is those are those who do not know of the riches that are present in Christ. The poor is not those who do not have dollars. 
The poor is not those who do not have bread. The poor, look at it. The definition of the poor sent me to bring the good news to the poor. Prisoners, prisoners of conscience, prisoners they have been imprisoned in their self, imprisoned in their lifestyle, imprisoned in their way of life, imprisoned in their own strategies and plans, imprisoned. That is a real prison. <laughs> prison of sin. And the one who saves has already saved, but people are still imprisoned in sin. The blind, the blind. People are walking blind on our roads. People are walking blind and are not aware of Jesus. It's, that's, the case, that's the case we have around us today. Is evangelization difficult? No. What is difficult is that you and I are not convinced that if we have the word of life. That's what it is. Or we are afraid that to evangelize depends on me. No, it does not depend on me. It depends on the one who gives the message. Give the message and allow the Lord to do the rest. Share that message and allow him to do the rest. Speak to the person next to you. Speak to your friends. Tell them you have this great message and you cannot stay a day without sharing that message with them. I tell you what. That's how the world goes forth to all the earth. Let us rise and pray.